Hey everybody and welcome to the weekly Scope 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 Scopes from the 19th to the 25th of February. So it's a new moon week so it's kind of long but I've started to um, sort in these ones but anyway just going to jump right in it. On the 19th of February we've got the moon entering void of course. If you want to know what void of course moon means listen to the end of this weekly scopes and that's where I put all the moon phases and all the moon void of course audio so you can listen. But from the beginning of March, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all the files for Moon Void, of course, and for the Moon Phases on a playlist. So if you're listening to me on YouTube, check out the playlist. You'll see it there with Moon Phases and what Moon Void, of course, does to make it easier and to make these sort of for you guys. So, yeah, let's get into it. On the 19th of February, Moon Void, of course, starts at 6.01. Then the moon enters Aquarius at 7.45 p.m. And remember that all times are in GMT. And also, if you want to know more about that, listen to the end of this audio. But the best use of the moon transiting in Aquarius is to look after your close relationships. Do all you can to help yourself and your family or community. Be open to original and innovative ideas and work with restrictions rather than try and rebel too much. Also on the 19th of February, Venus makes a semi-square to Uranus. So be prepared because you know Uranus to moons in Aquarius and Venus is involved. So this brings an increased need for passion when love may come on strong and fast, but not really last. So there'll be a lot of short term relationships or good or bad hookups, stuff like that. Relationships that have been a bit unstable, may be challenged now and breakups could be on the cards. It's a time for new experiences, but be warned that these new experiences may not always be smooth sailing. Unexpected twists and turns will come into play so don't be surprised if you find yourself falling in and out of love almost instantly <laughs> as i said earlier so yeah because love during the transit of venus semi-square uranus is anything but predictable so strap yourself up and brace yourself in like you were going on a roller coaster and be prepared for the impact so yeah that's um, the 19th of february on the 20th of February, we have that new supermoon. This is happening at 7, 6 a.m., all times at GMT. If you want to know about the general things like new moon rituals that I talk about, listen to the end of this audio, and um, I'm just giving a generalised overview of what to do in the new moon. Now I'm going to talk about what to do in this new moon that's happening on the 20th of February. So this new moon will occur on the 8th degree of Aquarius. So the 8th degree of Aquarius is a particularly special sort of degree because it's associated with the symbol of a beautiful gowned wax figure. That is the tagline, which symbolizes power and influence. This symbol speaks to the idea that even if something appears permanent and unchangeable, it can still be shaped and manipulated. So, you know, change always comes. This new moon is a powerful reminder that even the most influential people are subject to the whims of fate. So Aquarius is all about change and a lot of planets in constellational astrology, which these weekly scopes and daily scopes are based on. A lot of Venus is going into Aquarius. We've got Saturn going into Aquarius, so it's already there. So yeah, this new moon wants us to think about that. Although we may think we're in control of our lives, but really how much of our destiny is truly in our hands sometimes especially nowadays with the inflation cost of living in the uk it can just seem like we're all mere puppets guided by the hands of the government or the hands of fate in this instance and the new moon is a time to reflect on our place in the grand scheme of things not to get all scary and be like oh i don't have no control and but just to think about the things that we can control and usually it's only ourselves we can't control how others treat us really we can only be ourselves and hope that people treat us fair and if they don't then we move on to the next so it's a powerful reminder that our decisions and life choices shape our destiny yes but ultimately fate 
may have the say, final say, because, yeah, you know, you may remember a time when you were going after something and you thought you were going to get it and then you didn't get it. Or most of us, by the time we hit like our 30s, we think, oh, we've had at least one failed relationship. And if you haven't, well done you. And uh, <laughs> But if you have, you get it. So life reminds us that sometimes we can't control and the people we thought were going to be there for us. We can can't control that even sometimes that our plans that we make it are going to go right. And that's not to scare us, but just to remind us that, you know, to have some flexibility and also not to be too hard on ourselves when things don't go to plan. The new moon reveals to us the beauty of understanding our powerlessness and the freedom that comes with surrendering to the will of the universe, our higher selves, or just to the things, the will of the things that we can actually control and not the things we wish we could control. So at the time of this new moon, we've also got moon conjunct Saturn, Sun conjunct Saturn, Venus conjunct Neptune and Jupiter conjuncts Chiron these are big influences conjunctions so moon conjuncting saturn gives us the sense of soberness to the energy of this new moon and this lunar cycle of the new moon so saturn conjunct the moon gives us seriousness and discipline to how we approach our goals and our intentions and saturn is actually the co-ruler of aquarius alongside uranus which is the new moon is in the eighth degree of Aquarius so the sun conjuncting Saturn also so we've got the two luminaries the sun and the moon conjuncting Saturn and um, giving us a practical and focused energy encouraging us to take small meaningful steps towards what we want to manifest Venus conjuncting Neptune brings an increased sense of compassion and sensitivity and is a reminder to be gentle with ourselves and extend understanding and patience to others the transit of Jupiter conjunct in Chiron brings healing insights into our lives and a much needed reminder of our inner strength and the courage to embrace our vulnerabilities. The negative impact of these transits of the moon and sun conjunct Saturn are notorious for making us feel um, lonely and more depressed and full of sorrow and lacking energy and enthusiasm. Yet, Venus and Neptune's conjunction brings about a sense of confusion as well and escapism through drugs and alcohol or other substances and can lead to misunderstanding and delusionment. So try and tap into the positive aspects which is the courage to embrace your vulnerabilities and to stay focused on what you need to if you are feeling down cry feel down you know i'm not saying ignore your feelings but try not to escape into drugs or alcohol or anything else that's going to harm you in the long run Finally, Jupiter's conjunction to Chiron has the potential to open up our old wounds. So this also adds to the tensions that can come about within yourself or in relationships. So just me be mindful of that. But we also have got the Sun semi-set star Venus, Mercury semi-set star Uranus, Saturn semi-set star Pluto and Uranus semi-set star Chiron. The Sun semi-set star Venus brings a gentle energy, providing a sense of balance, harmony and peace. Meanwhile, Mercury semi-set star with Uranus creates a spark of creativity and originality, encouraging us to think outside the box. Saturn semi-set star with Pluto gives us the strength to cut through the fog and focus on what really matters. And Uranus's semi-set star with Chiron gives us hope with a reminder that we can heal our wounds and come out even stronger on the other end. Also today, at the time of the new moon, Mercury makes a semi-square to Venus, Venus makes a semi-square to Uranus, and Mars makes a sesti-square to Pluto. So this complex interplay of different planetary transits may bring about sudden, unexpected changes and potential conflicts that could be destabilising, but could also lead to creative breakthroughs and incredible growth so going back to what i said earlier about jupiter's conjunction with chiron venus's and neptune's conjunction and the sun and saturn use those energies to stay stable and the energies of mercury semi-square venus venus semi-square uranus and mars is sesti-square to pluto can help you find that growth if you're looking for that right now these challenging planetary transits could sometimes lead to um again inattention and confusion but they also support taking action and finding solutions so even though 
the semi-squares of Mercury, Venus, Uranus and Mars and Pluto are adding to that tensor and it can also help us move forward. Also at the time of the new moon, Saturn makes a semi-square to Chiron and Neptune makes a semi-square to the moon's north node. So these alignments warn us that we may be challenged to balance the energies between our inner and outer selves. Saturn, the planet of limitations, can suggest that we may be feeling restricted in other areas and with the moon and the sun conjuncting, it's adding to that, amplifying this aspect of Saturn's sem semi-square to Chiron and also Jupiter conjunction to Chiron as well so Chiron and Neptune's semi-square the planets of healing and spirituality can bring with them feelings of introspection and soul searching the north node represents our destiny so it provides the vibration to navigate the tumultuous energies of Saturn and Chiron and can offer us insight into how we can align ourselves with our higher purpose so this energy helps us to question why am I feeling like this? How can I stop feeling like this? If I've got addictions, how can I stop? What triggers me to be self-destructive or enter toxic relationships? So it provides the foundation to question ourselves and to uncover the highest way to get out of any problems you're facing right now. Also, Mercury makes a set style to Jupiter, Mars makes a set style to Chiron, and Mercury makes a set style to Chiron, and Venus also makes a set style to Pluto. So as we have seen, the February new moon brings a wave of powerful energy and the transits of Mercury, semi-set star Mars and set star Chiron and Mercury set star Chiron and Venus set star Pluto contribute to this energy in a big way. The set stars between Mercury and Jupiter offer us an uh, opportunity to learn new knowledge and to expand our understanding while Mars sets style tiring encourages us to healing and growth. So we can see it's a lot of healing, a lot of supporting us going deep and questioning ourselves and moving forward past the pain. Mercury sets down to Chiron also provides a chance to accept the lessons of the past and Venus sets down Pluto encourages us to make changes and take actions towards our actions. So if there's been things you've been putting off, you know, we've all got life goals when we're young in our adolescence, we all want to take on the world and be the best we can and then by the time sometimes we reach from anywhere late 20s to early 40s, we can just have given up on life completely so now this energy is allowing you to think what from my past is holding me back how can I stop it from holding me back how can I move forward and Pluto is supporting you in that Venus is supporting you in that and Mercury sets down child and is supporting you in that deep introspection self-care and love understanding forgiveness and acceptance as well also, Mercury's trying to Mars and Mercury square Uranus. So we've got a lot of Mercury placements, a lot of Mars action going forward. Uranus making us think outside the box. And of, of course, the moons in the constellation of Aquarius, which Uranus call rules. And then Mercury, the planet of communication, getting us to think. So it brings intense energy of honesty and creativity when Mercury trines Mars and Mercury squares Uranus both giving us the opportunity to move forward with our passions and speak our truth with clarity and confidence. Mercury squares to Uranus it encourages us to open our minds and be open to the unexpected. With this combination of energies, we have a chance to explore new ideas, take risks and challenge ourselves to think and act differently. These transits can give us the courage and insight to make positive changes and decisions that will bring us closest to our goals. So also today, there's a few quintiles. So I'm just going to explain a bit about what quintiles are. So quintiles are subtle and esoteric aspects in astrology. And at the time of the new moon, transiting uh, moon is making a quintile to Uranus. And Jupiter's also making a quintile to Pluto. So again, these aspects are supporting spiritual growth, transformation, renewal and contemplation, reflection, making you go within yourself to find the answers and as we open ourselves up to the potential that lies in the cosmic energy of the new moon we can use this opportunity to take charge of our lives and create the destiny we desire so again these quintiles are helping us go into this time of self-discovery where we can assess our current situation and envision a better future for ourselves for our families for our friends 
and you know go forward and change ourselves because that's the only way each of us can bring about the changes we want to see in our world so these quintile aspects are providing us with the inner strength and motivation to bring our dreams to completion so as i said earlier the moon and the sun are in the eighth degree of aquarius and as i explained earlier the tagline for this is the beautiful gowned wax figures on display so i'm going to talk a bit more about it so this is a powerful celestial reminder of the inspiration we can get from the presence of um following the examples of authentic humanitarian visionaries so people that are actually working in our world or who have in the past so people from history that have wanted to change humanity for the better and if we follow those who live or are living by their example and not their words who show us that humanity can grow as individuals and a collective for the better so if you may get the inner calling and feel inspired and motivated to become a creator of the new helping to develop a more beautiful and meaningful world taking on the inspiration from those leaders that are living in the world right now or those from the past to create a future where we all have a chance to succeed and where equality and acceptance reigns also saturn the co ruler of aquarius resides today in the fourth degree of aquarius and the tagline for this is a hindu yogi demonstrates his healing powers so this is a powerful reminder of the importance of using our spiritual energies to restore the natural harmony within us that has been disturbed by our attempts to go above and beyond nature so as we have a lot of things going on in climate change we're actually destroying our planet and i'm not going to get on my soul soapbox about it and go moaning but we need to change so we also sometimes as human beings try to take on too much and this doesn't mean that we can't be progressive but it's a reminder to only take on the daily tasks that you can don't try and do too many things at once sometimes we procrastinate on doing the things so it's a reminder to actually if we want to do the big things we have to break them down into small preferably daily tasks also to think about our relationships how they're wasting your personal energy especially if they're toxic and how if the energy that you didn't waste in self-destructive behaviors and i know it can be hard if you suffer from addictions and stuff like that to get out of it but this is calling for you to see look within and to see what you can do to heal that wounded child that we all have and to have it and to understand it and to make plans to heal it also it this symbol of fourth degree of aquarius reminds us to achieve true balance we must use all the energies available to us so the mind the body and the spirit soul higher consciousness whatever your higher self whatever um, you want to call it and through the discipline use of physical spiritual and intellectual energies we can transcend nature through the mind in a balanced way rather than in a self-destructive way we have all been collectively programmed to do instead of trying to overreach and push beyond your boundaries of your natural state it's a reminder that we must embrace our humanity and our connection to the spiritual world to find proper balance and harmony within ourselves spiritual healing is a powerful tool for restoring energy and harmony and we've got a lot of chiron semi squares and conjunctions um helping us do that as well to heal to tap into that spiritual realm at the time we currently live in we have all seen what rampant capitalism has done to the world and yes it ain't all been bad but still now is the time according to the planets to start working with nature and stop destroying it by connecting with the universe's natural cycles we can heal ourselves and restore our inner harmony we can use the wisdom and knowledge of the cosmos to guide us in our journey of self-discovery awareness and spiritual intellectual physical balance i don't want to say growth good you may not want to put on weight unless you need to but yeah anyway moving on just as the planet saturn teaches us we must use our spiritual energy to bring balance into our lives and this can be done through practices such as meditation mindfulness and connecting with the natural world and also through whatever method you want some of us find peace and meditate by listening to heavy medical 
or dance or music or drum and bass and stuff it's finding whatever brings you peace as long as it does actually bring you peace because a lot of people get put off by things like mindfulness and meditation because they think they've got to you know sit in lotus position or do yoga or tai chi to find their inner spirituality but you can find it by doing the things healthy things that help you feel connected and um, with yourself and allows you to open your heart and mind to the power of the universe and you know experience its healing or higher power or whatever you believe in anyway by tapping into the infinite power of the cosmos we can nourish ourselves and bring harmony back into our lives using the planetary energies and psychological emotional and spiritual transformation techniques to find clarity and peace can be the gateway to your higher purpose so if you've been thinking oh what should i do with my life maybe just taking some time out to yourself to reflect even if it's just five minutes because we are busy a lot in today's world but i think we should always make time for ourselves and check in with ourselves because sometimes we can just get lost in work and stuff I, I can do that and we can forget that we are a human being and we have feelings and we've got needs and we should check in with ourselves to try and you know fulfill these needs and to sort of like seek guidance and understanding and to live with it in a knowing that comes from being in tune with yourself and the natural rhythms of the universe and as you learn to trust the power of the universe you can be blessed with the courage to take risks and break the bounds of your self-imposed limitations because um, sometimes you know we've got a lot of Saturn's energy Saturn's conjuncting the moon and the sun so sometimes Saturn restricts us and makes us depressed and stuff but on the astrological level this happens to make us sit back Saturn's not actually telling us no you can't live your best life it's actually giving us the insight to see what we actually need to do to live our best lives and often it means healing our past wounds and making solid strategic strategic well thought out plans to move forward with our lives and at the time of this new moon also there's some um, fit star aspects that are helping us fulfill this need for growth and exploration so the moon makes a square to the fit star Murfak, hope I'm saying that right so this supports having a focused mind and a driven attitude and this is matched with the steadiness um, and strength of the fit star Rook Bat which is also making a semi-square to the moon. So this helps us to ensure that the results of whatever you focus on are going to be meaningful to you and um, also have some profound, in-depth and accurate sort of like connection. So it just helps you to focus on the things that you really want to do. And these fit stars create a synergy that helps us to create balance between creativity and practicality, ensuring that with the results that we want, even if we are challenged, are both steady. So it's sort of like reminding us that, yeah, the world is kind of crap right now, but if we keep on moving forward, we can uh, make those positive changes that we want to see. Also, the moon makes a set star to the fixed star, my rack setting the stage for openness and receptivity, new ideas and experiences. The moon also makes a semi-set style to the fixed star Altair. Sorry, I'm just making sure I get these names. Altair, encouraging us to be bold and push through our boundaries and explore the unknown. Mercury also makes a semi-square to Vega, sparking a sense of magical, charismatic meaning that can be difficult to put into words, but be highly felt. So this supports a sort of spiritual work, using tarot in a safe way and trying to contact your guides and higher self and being able to get clear guidance from them. All in all, this combination of fit stars supports the unique opportunity for further exploration and growth provided by all the aspects that I mentioned. So, in summary, this February new moon is an incredible potent time for reflection and soul searching as we ask ourselves, how much control do I really have over my life? It's an opportunity to take a step from our everyday lives, to take a long hard look at the choices we have made and the decisions we have yet to make and why we keep putting things off. You ask yourself questions like, do we have free will or is our destiny already predetermined? 
This is a perfect time to explore our beliefs around fate and free will and to reflect on your life choices and how they impact your present and your future as well. To make the most of this powerful new moon, take a few moments to meditate or journal your thoughts and feelings and consider how you can best manifest your desires in a healthy and balanced way. I know that, yeah, affirmations and things work, but we must take practical actions to create a solid foundation upon which to build our dreams and goals. It's a time for you to draw upon your inner resources and go in a direction you never have gone before. So take a chance. What is it do you really want from your life? This new moon, Aquarius, in the eighth degree, is supporting you, breaking free and moving forward. The choice is yours. On the 21st of February, the moon void, of course, starts at 6.44 a.m. So when the moon is in void, of course, some astrologers say it's best to put off things also today at 7.41 the moon enters the constellation of Pisces so when the moon enters the constellations of Pisces people can become more introverted over the next few days if you want to know more about what to do and how it's going to affect you listen to the end of this audio also today there is a cosmic clash between Mercury and Uranus, which brings a powerful energy of creative thought, allowing for the expression of original and eccentric ideas. However, this transit can also bring about difficulties in appreciating other people's point of view due to the inherent difficulty or unwillingness to understand different perspectives. So this can lead to people being inflexible in their thinking and resistance to change, just becoming entrenched in their old ideas not wanting to accept any new person or idea or anything like that so this can also increase a level of nervous energy in some if they feel like they're not being accepted or in you because you feel like you know you can't accept what someone's telling you and you want to stick with your own beliefs Just question yourself. So, of course, you have to stay centred in yourself, but ask yourself, are you just staying centred in yourself as an excuse because you're struggling to adjust to familiar ideas and people? Also, under this influence, people can become obsessed with the idea that we must hold on to the same way you're thinking, even if it is outdated or relevant in practical sense this can manifest through communication breakdowns between ourselves and those around us as we try to cling to our former ways of thinking instead of embracing the new this can cause tension confusion and a general unease making it difficult to move forward on the 22nd of february Mercury makes a trine to Mars. We find ourselves in a unique position to act with clarity, decisiveness and efficiency. Our minds become sharp and articulate, allowing us to quickly understand complex ideas and find the right answer to difficult questions. We are motivated to determine our priorities and with the energy and vigour of Mars, we can push through our obstacles with more determination. Our communication skills can be at peak and our ability to think critically and thoroughly comes to the front. If someone comes to you with a complex answer today, sorry, question today, you have the ability to supply um, an answer that is full of meaning while at the same time remaining concise and to the point, which I'm struggling to do right now. So anyway, in this way, we have the opportunity to make significant progress and achieve our goals when Mercury is trining Mars. So yeah, that's the 22nd of February. On the 23rd of February... The moon void of course starts at 11.03, then the moon enters its crescent moon phase at 2.28 GMT time in the afternoon. So the key words for the crescent moon are self-assertion, creativity, focusing on taking actions to make your goals a reality versus thinking about how you can do so. If you want to know more about the crescent moon, listen to the end of this. Also today at 10.14 the moon enters Aries. So when the moon enters the constellation of Aries, you and others may communicate more directly and thoughtlessly, going after what you want without thinking about each other's reactions or feelings. So yeah, if you want to know more, go to the end of this order and the full explanation is there. Okay, 
also today on the 23rd of February the sun is making a set star to the moon's north node so this is a good time for social integration and making new connections new alliances can be formed and influential contacts can be made so take this opportunity to cultivate grow relationships and make the most of the present moment the set star between the transiting sun and the transiting moon's north node can be a chance to start something special and make a lasting impression also today transiting mercury makes a semi-square to venus so with this aspect the universe is sending you a special invitation to dive deep and explore the depths of your heart love and romance are calling and you should listen closely to the whispers of your heart take this time to express your emotions and let your feelings flow Follow your heart and explore the beauty and fragility of love and relationships. This is a perfect time to have a romantic dinner for two, date night or even a romantic dinner for yourself or with the masculine and feminine sides of your own um, personality, which I do all the time, but yeah, enough about me. Or say helpful, um, deep conversations and um, with others a simple gesture of affection that can show your loved one how deeply you care mercury and venus have aligned to create a window of opportunity for you to explore what lies within your heart and express it in the most beautiful way whether you are in a committed relationship or newly single this is a perfect time to take the leap whether it's a leap of faith into a new relationship or just a leap out of your own bed take a chance your heart is sure to be filled with joy when you take the time to appreciate the beauty in your life, whether it's a romantic gesture, silly joke or a simple thank you. It's time to express your feelings and show your appreciation for what you have and step out of your comfort zone and get creative and make your move. On the 24th of February, the Moon's North Node stations direct so this symbolises an opportunity to take a step forward and create positive changes in your life. This time is an invitation to look within and allow your higher self to guide you in the right direction. You may be called upon to make a decision that could potentially alter the course of your life. Listen to your intuition and trust your instincts. You have the power to manifest great things. So this time to commit to the changes that will bring you closer to your desired outcome. Take a moment to pause, reflect and make a conscious effort to move away from your past and take a step forward towards a brighter future. So yeah, that's the 24th of February. On the 25th of February, there's nothing to report. So what is Void of Course? Void of Course Moon in Astrology is when the Moon journeys through its cycle and it makes one last main aspect, i.e. a trine conjunction square set star opposition with another planet before changing signs, yet it still makes minor aspects I, I call them major and I do include them in my um, weekly scopes and daily scopes but anyway so it will still make minor aspects such so as semi squares, set stars, quintiles and sister quadrant but it won't make any what's called in inverted commas main aspects when the moon enters void of course it can be a time of uncertainty and confusion for many because of this some astrologers suggest it may be best to delay things during the moon void of course period to be on the safe side it may be sensible to plan ahead stay clear of major events or decisions during the time period when moon's void of course sometimes moon void of course can just last for an hour sometimes it can last for a day if you can it's a perfect time to take some time out to reflect and relax if you feel affected by the moon void of course period in astrology the moon represents our emotions and innermost feelings so this is especially a vulnerable time for some people especially for those with strong cancer or water energy pisces and scorpio in their chart so water signs and those affected will especially benefit for taking time out to reflect and check in with themselves especially on your belief patterns maybe thinking of starting or continuing the work to let go of them excellent time to practice mindfulness and to be open to the universe lessons for you giving gratitude even though it can be a challenging time it can also be a powerful one 
if we used Moon Void, of course, periods as a perfect opportunity to cultivate our inner strength and wisdom. When the moon enters Aquarius, people may become more emotionally detached or it allows for that. But generally, people can be more friendly and charitable. You may be more open to accepting new ideas and people and trying new activities. You may socialize more with friends or co-workers. Some of you may join a deep in your commitment to charitable organizations, stepping up to take a leadership role, networking and making new professional or authoritative connections that can help you is also possible. If you feel confident, now is the perfect time to approach people in powerful guidance. This is also an excellent time to research or buy technological or scientific appliances, spend time in group, music, education, entertainment or social activities. Some of you may find yourself more open to the cult and other deeper of meanings of yeah life <laughs> when the means and transiting in Aquarius they can also be a strong girls to express yourself more authentically and have more freedom negatively people can use sub tactics to get what they want because Aquarius Uranus Saturn's also got the influence there so that's why some of you may become emotionally detached and get more serious about your work so yeah what was I saying? People may use sub tactics to get what they want or try to dominate others, which can cause resentment and arguments. Plus be fickle, blow hot and cold and be more unpredictable than usual, which can cause them to be unreliable and impractical. Emotional outbursts can cause discontent in all types of connections and people can openly disapprove of others, friendships and other people's choices. During this transit, the best use of the moon transiting in Aquarius is to look after your close relationships. Do all you can to help yourself, your family and your, your community. Be open to original and innovative concepts and work with restrictions rather than rebel too much yet stay innovative and move forward for you gardeners and farmer types out there when the moon's in the constellation of aquarius it's an excellent time to trim plants store and plant bulbs sow chives onions leeks salads garlic amethyst tulips and daffodils and lilies although in some places it depending on when you're listening to this may be too cold to so maybe planning your schedule writing any schedule on how you're going to sow these vegetables or plants for next year getting rid of parasites domesticating your garden if you want to slow grow for any reason it's also a great energy to plant onions that can bring a big harvest in the long run it's kind of like one of those old folklore tales planting onions under aquarius and other air signs meant to bring bountiful reaps to reward so yeah new moon energy is all about new beginnings even if it's just new ways of thinking and doing things when it is new moon it's an excellent time to think about the new ways to improve your life start new projects look for new career path begin new courses and things like that rearranging your home or office for comfort and practicality is also a good use of this energy still it may not be best to take practical action just yet Nevertheless, researching or creating a strategic plan to ensure you will stay consistent in trying to achieve your fresh or continuing goals is the best use of this energy. Don't underestimate the planning side of things. People are more likely to think more independently, focusing on their own priorities so there can be more introverted behaviour and less socialising. Anything started under the new moon is well expected to be a success in the long run if you are prepared to do the hard work to make your dreams a reality. At the onset of a new moon is the universe opportunity to manifest something new in your life, to fill any lacking voids, whether it be a fresh experience, deciding to become the individual you were born to be, or trying a new service, or buying a new object or trying a new product, this is your cosmic chance to feel revitalized. So sometimes that means finally getting that new couch you've been eyeing for months, or maybe it's the new job you've been dreaming of. 
but more often than not it's something more unexpected or something that you know you need to do like ending a toxic relationship or toxic addiction but you've been putting it off because it can be scary to do so new moons are a time when the higher power and the universe and the planets conspire to bring you exactly what you need and sometimes you don't even know what that is so some of you may be surprised but we must make room for new beginnings and fun you may find yourself doing something you've never imagined like taking a random road trip or spontaneously starting a new course learning a new skill or anything else like that negatively because people can become intensely focused on their needs at this time they can be increased egotistical and selfish behavior and at the extremes using controlling behaviors to get what they want which can cause full-blown arguments as people try to dominate each other and the environment so yeah the new moon can also be a good time to invest money in your own personal development or long-term investments in stock or other markets especially those related to food creativity and entertainment but make sure you check the facts before taking a risk so new moon rituals some rituals to do during the new moon some people find it beneficial to take a moment to reflect on what it is they want to bring into their lives thinking deeply and intentionally some people create affirmations that speaks to bringing more power and reaching their highest potential writing down their thoughts and feelings can bring clarity to your vision so take some time out to journal planting seeds literally and metaphorically can help manifest your desires you know consult your intuition tarot or another divination method to gain insight into your innermost wishes or create a vision board to help you stay on track don't forget to reach out to the people who can help you on your journey or you may prefer to create a sacred space so filling this space with items that can bring joy and that are special to you lighting some candles burning some incense sitting out under the tree unless it's really cold or just in your bedroom or in the bath just a place where you can set your intentions write down your plans it's best to avoid energy drainers and say yes to maybe dates and invites that come your way during this time but don't ignore red flags all in all everything that happens over the next few weeks during the new moon phase can teach us big lessons when the moon's in the constellation of pisces people can become more introverted and be more preoccupied with their inner emotional and psychological life rather than what's going on in the external world this can cause problems in close relationships or the workplace people can become more hypersensitive to what is or what they view as an attack on them you can miss important details or forget to do the things you promise the Pisces moon is known to make people more fearful and fixated than normal also more prone to manipulation or being deceptive you can be more susceptible to psychic and subliminal influences for better or worse so just be careful because you can be more vulnerable or gullible to deceptive psychic advice because you can never ever forget that just as people in earth can be deceptive those in the astral realm can be too so yeah if you cannot stay grounded it's best to avoid the astral realms and using your tarot and stuff like that because the information that you may get may not be accurate so when you're using your extrasensory perceptiveness just be careful when the moon's in Pisces yeah if you can stay alert it's a perfect time for all inner work and mystical or higher consciousness development negatively unhealed emotions in the subconscious mind can drive unstable thoughts and behaviors so you may be prone to escaping into alcohol or drugs or any other distractions so just be careful about that and if you're overly affected and you feel like you can't deal reach out for some help the best use of the energy in the moon in pisces is to plan for your future especially your creative future so if you're into art music design anything like that appreciate nature and natural beauty more working on artistic projects listening to music or watching films or other media 
that stimulates your artistic, more expressive sides. Do all your best to avoid excessive daydreaming and stay realistic in all you do, especially regarding your career and your finances and your romantic life. Helping those who may be going through a bad time right now or someone could show you empathy if you're feeling down. Take some time out to meditate, practice mindfulness, maybe some Tai Chi yoga, gentle dance or primal screaming if you just want to let it all out. Self-soothe, relax and explore the psychic and the cult only if you can stay grounded. I've said that twice because it's important and um, it's also an excellent vibration to make strategic plans for dealing with any unhealed psychological, emotional or spiritual trauma as well. For you gardeners out there, when the moon's in the constellation of Pisces, it's time to plant and transplant, especially leafy crops, roots can recover quickly and planting your crops during the Pisces these moons even if you're doing it indoors can promote immense root growth so the key words of the waxing crescent moon are self-assertion creativity focusing on taking actions to make your goals a reality versus thinking about how you can do so increase awareness having breakthroughs in your challenges ability to learn quickly waxing means that the illuminated part of the moon is increasing in light so in astrology, the waxing crescent moon is the first phase which moves the moon towards the full moon period after leaving the new moon stage. During the waxing crescent phase, the night sky reveals a pale crescent with a thin silver light, you know, if we can see the moon that night, that brings in the first sign of the new first quarter moon. This celestial event signifies a spiritually charged moment as the waxing moon symbolizes growth and manifestation it is a time of reflection and intention setting when we can harness the potency of the moon to bring our hopes and wishes into the physical world the waxing phase is a time to start taking slow and steady action towards working old goals or any goals that you set at the time of the new moon so if you vow to start or continue health eating to exercise or any other routine this energy helps you refocus now is also the time to start your research if you're lacking information that will help you reach your goals also a perfect energy that gives courage allowing you to make that leap of faith supporting others networking or asking for help from those in authority now is the time to build a solid foundation and solving your future success after the energies of the new moon have been fully absorbed we may start to feel a greater sense of motivation and purpose and be ready to embrace in our desires with open arms so yeah let the waxing moon be a reminder to focus on your goals and intentions and channel the energy of the crescent night skies to bring your dreams into reality slowly but slowly when the moon enters aries you and others may communicate more directly and thoughtlessly going after what you want without thinking about others reactions or feelings the moon in aries can be a highly emotionally unpredictable time people are more likely to go off their gut feelings their intuition rather than rational thoughts so this is good in some respects because we should always trust our guts but at some times because people are just impulsive they may get the wrong end of the stick of the argument or what you're saying and just blow up emotionally in your face or take offense to whatever you're saying also when the moon's in aries some people can be more self-conscious and as i mentioned more sensitive to their environment and the people in it people can get highly irritated but this irritation is caused mostly by impatience so try to be as patient as you can and avoid going to the extremes to get your own way try and ask people nicely and respect their boundaries on the other hand even if you are generally more shy, you can become more assertive and have more courage and self-assurance, which is also good energy for setting boundaries, especially if you're a bit of a people pleaser and stuff. This moon in Aries allows you to really stick up for yourself. But as I said earlier, try not to go overboard because it's good not to let others walk over you. 
but we must always remember to respect others' opinions, needs and boundaries as well. Aries energy is all by Mars, so this is our motivational energy controls our sex drives our thought drives our physical drives so it's good for raw business self-promotion and all forms of physical activity exercise taking the initiative and doing what needs to be done can bring great leaps forwards in career or personal projects Competitiveness can also be really, really high when the moon's in Aries because people in general can refuse to take second place. So it's good for you to assert yourself, put yourself out there, compete only with yourself, I would say. But if there are promotions and things going on and things that you want to go, go after, like a love interest and things like that, don't sorry away, go for it because sometimes in life we've only got that one chance but again you respect people's boundaries and stuff like that. When the moon is in Aries there can be a strong dislike of limitations and a thirst for freedom. The negatives of this transit are short tempers as mentioned before, impatient action which can cause mistakes or accidents. There can also be problems with friends and family more than usual. The best use, so you know, if you're really going to channel yourself and put your all in and use this vibration, start new ventures and look for fresh opportunities. Look for fresh solutions in any existing projects and that you've got going on. Think outside the box and try, you know, if you've been stuck in the and rock, don't rush ahead. Just take some time out and think about how can I go about this project in a different way. Use moderation and restraint to avoid mistakes and accidents, waste of time, energy and other resources right now. It's also best to think before you act or react, check facts before making decisions and you will succeed. And again, if I say this because this Aries energy can really push people over the years, respect the needs of others as well as assert yourself and protect your own boundaries. For you farmers out there, when the moon's in Aries, it's an excellent time to harvest and store your crops, cultivate your ground or your land or your garden, eliminate weeds and incense. And it's also good to mow and fertilise lawns for those who are still doing that in my country, England. We're not doing that so much now, but if it's hotter where you are, then go ahead. So yeah, that's the weekly scope, 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 scope from the 19th to the 25th of February. Take care and see you next week.